Okay, so now we're going to talk about spreads. And here's the picture that I want you to keep in your mind. So here's time, here's uh, yields or interest rates, and we've got a term structure. So let me draw it upward sloping. This is the government uh, of treasuries. These are the risk freeze. These are, these are, let's say, the spot rates. Spot rate one, spot rate two, spot rate three. So these are the risk free treasury rates. Now, when we're valuing uh, corporate bonds, which have default risk, uh, we need to add on a spread to each of these spot rates to compensate us for that risk. That was the Z spread, we talked about that. So let me just put another line up here and we'll say this distance here represents the Z spread. So uh, now, uh, if we have a bond with an embedded option, we need to adjust this Z spread to remove the value of an option. So let's talk about a callable bond. Callable bond. So what am I gonna do? Well, this the Z spread will be adjusted, and I'm just gonna draw a line in here. And what have we done? Well, this distance here represents the value of the option. The option value. And then this distance here represents the option adjusted spread. So now our learning outcome statements want us to talk about this option adjusted spread and how it reacts to changes in interest rates and changes in interest rate volatility. This is the standard deviation of interest rates. They kind of look the same, but they're different. So make sure we know this. So uh, let's uh, look at the first case here, changes in interest rates. If I increase interest rates, what happens? Bond prices fall. The call option moves out of the money. So we reduce the value of the call. So if the call option decreases, what happens to the OAS? It must expand. It increases the OAS. Now, this Z spread we've talked about, we mentioned it's called a static spread. Static, it means it does not change. So only the components within it are changing. If interest rates rise, option value, the call option value decreases, so the OAS increases. I think we've got to know that. Let's give ourselves a little bit more room here, and let's just talk about if interest rates fall. If interest rates fall, well now bond prices rise. This call option moves into the money. So the value of this call increases. So if this value of the option increases, that must mean the OAS is decreasing. <coughs> decreases the OAS, there it is. So changes in interest rates, we now know rising interest rates cause the OAS to increase. Decreasing interest rates cause the OAS to fall. Now, let's flip over and talk about volatility. Okay, the interest rate volatility, I'll put it right up here. Changes in interest rate volatility. Standard deviation of interest rates. So if I increase the uh, volatility, interest rate volatility. So what does that mean? Interest rates now are, are quite volatile. Well, think about option theory. Higher volatility, higher option value. And if the option value increases, the OAS must decrease. Decrease in OAS. And let's look at the other case. If the volatility of interest rates declines, then uh, uh, the value of the call decreases and the OAS increases. So I think that you've got to take this away here. Increase in volatility, decrease in OAS. Decrease in volatility, increase in OAS. Two things that look the same, change in interest rate volatility, change in interest rates, very different effects, and I can see that coming in as a multiple choice question. Okay, so now we'll move on to our next topic.